Okay, so today I wanna to talk about how much does it cost to take your family to Disney World? My family and I just went this past year. We went in June. We're in the fall months now, so I'm kind of posting this video a bit late. But, you know, I used to go to Disney all the, all the time by myself. But then I got married, my husband has three kids, so we quickly became a family of five. And going to Walt Disney World went from very inexpensive to very expensive for me. So I did a whole cost analysis, I did a budget, I did all the things, and I wanna share with you, if you are contemplating taking you and your family to Disney World, I'm just gonna share what it costs us to take our family to Disney World so that you can determine if it's worth it and in your budget. The very first thing in planning a Disney World vacation is really the travel to get there. For us, we live on the West Coast, so it is not as easy as it is for some others. I grew up on the East Coast, so for us, we were always in driving distance to Disney. So I think that's why it was really economical for me and my family growing up. But now that I live on the West Coast, it entails taking flights. So that is such an added cost. So if you know that you don't live in driving distance to Disney, you really have to take into the account of flights. And right now flights are very expensive. I was able to use some of the points from my credit card and it knocked our flights down to $1,610. So if you're into travel hacking or using points or anything like that, I would highly recommend saving your points and trying to use them for flights. That's really helpful. But if not, like I said, you really should be budgeting between $1,500 and $3,000 dollars just in flights alone if you're coming from the west coast again i know there's a lot of budget airlines that you can take if you're maybe like in you know the midwest that can get you there for a lot cheaper but unfortunately for us we're coming all the way from california it's really hard to do some of the budget airlines all the way to orlando so keep that in mind Okay, the next thing that you're going to plan is a place to stay, right? So again, I would consider the vacation that we did kind of right in the middle. It's not super budget friendly. So I'm not going to say like, oh, here's like the best and cheapest ways to do Disney. We could have definitely done it way cheaper than the way that we did, but we also didn't do it super upscale. My husband and I have been to Disney on our own and we've done it a little bit more upscale. And so it's kind of with our kids, we did it right in the middle. Um, and so we did decide to stay on Disney property. That's a big determination between like your cost factor. We stayed on property at Disney just because we really did want to be in the Disney bubble. We didn't want to have to drive far. We wanted to be able to do the monorail system, the bus system, all the works. And so for us, we did splurge a little extra and we stayed on property. We stayed for a total of four nights on Disney's property, and so it was $8.25 per room. The next thing that we included in on our budget list was a rental car. You don't have to do that if you're going just to Disney and you're staying in the Disney bubble. Disney is really accommodating as far as using the bus system, using Ubers, things like that, but we were gonna be doing other things outside of Disney. We did the Kennedy Space Center. We did Gatorland. I really wanted to be able to show the kids around Florida a little bit, so for us, we did get a rental car. That was $343 for about five to six days. And then of course include gas in on that. Additional cost was about $50 for that, so. The next really big cost that we had is the tickets. <laughs> you have to have tickets to get into Disney. We ended up doing hopper tickets on top of that so that we could, you know, bounce between parks. It worked out really nicely for our family. We would go to one park during the day. We would take a midday break so the kids could go play in the pool, take a nap if they needed it. Disney's quite exhausting, so I wanted to give them enough time to recharge. And then at night, we would usually go to a different park. So for us, hoppers are essential, but you don't have to, again, if you're trying to cut costs. We also have military tickets. So my husband is a veteran. We highly take advantage of any kind of uh, discount that we can get. And so for us, um, our grand total for tickets ended up being $1,610. So again, Disney also, if you are 10 and older, they consider you an adult. So I think we ended up getting like five adult tickets. All of our kids are over 10. We have 10, 12, and 13. So all of our kids are over 10. So we made adult ticket or adult prices for five tickets. Food is the next big expense to take into account. I watched all the Disney blogs before we went, got all the tips and tricks, and everybody recommended to do an Instant Cart order. So we did do an Instant Cart order. I spent about $100 on that. But I will be honest, we ended up eating out a lot. And I think it was just because 
we were on Disney's property. Our hotel had really good food. The kids really liked it. Sometimes it was like really convenient. If we were sitting by the pool, we would just run in and grab food um, at our hotel at the food court and then bring it by the pool even. So we did end up spending a good bit more on food than probably I would have thought we did. It ended up being about, let's see, $600 on food. Another additional cost that we had was we really wanted to do Chef Mickey's. That was really important to me. I grew up going to Chef Mickey's. It's a staple for us. I knew I was going to plan some kind of character breast breakfast for us. And so that was the one thing that I did splurge on was a character breakfast for five people. It's $50 a person. We ended up spending a grand total with tip and everything, $300 at Chef Mickey. So, you know, that's a pretty hefty bill, but for us, I will always say it was so well worth it. The kids got to get up close and personal to all of the um, characters. They came around our table. We have the best photos, the best videos. That was definitely like a highlight, I think, of, of our trip actually. So, you know, again, you can definitely cut that cost out and not do it, but for us, it was about $300. And lastly, the favorite section for our kids would definitely be the souvenir section. So we did budget in miscellaneous items. For us, we did a $100 budget for each of our kids. So they had $100 that they could spend. We thought it might be easier that way because we didn't want them to you know, go to Disney and we were going to all these different parks and then at every single park be like, can I get this? Can I get this? Can I get this? And so we just said, here's your budget, spend it as you want to. If you wanna get one thing from one park and one other thing from another, that's great. Like, here's your $100, spend it how you want to. Now, as you know, $100 does not go far at Disney at all. They actually each walked away with just one thing. The girls had the lounge flies, they wanted the lounge flies backpacks, and those go for $90 a purse. So, you know, they did end up spending their souvenir money, but we gave them $300. And then my husband and I were not planning to give ourselves a souvenir budget just because, um, again, we go to Disney World and we bought all the things that we want to buy previously at different trips, but it was my birthday and um, I saw this ring and I wasn't going to get it for myself, but my husband ended up getting it and it's actually just like the cutest, ignore my um, fingernails right now, but I don't know if you can see it. It's a Pandora and I really don't think that this um, video is doing it justice at all. It's a very beautiful sparkly um, ring that has my birthstone in it and so I did end up getting a really nice ring and I mean it was an expensive I mean, it was expensive, but I'm not gonna include that in on the budget, but we did include the $300 that the kids spent for souvenirs. Okay, so for the grand total, I'm sure you are curious, what is the budget for a family of five going to Walt Disney World? So I'm gonna give you a quick little rundown. We spent 1,600 on our flights. We spent uh, 1,900 on our hotel and our room. We spent $343 on our rental car. We spent $1,600 on our Disney tickets, we spent roughly $1,000 on food, roughly $600 on souvenirs. Um, so for a grand total, I would say we spent $7,116 on our Disney vacation for a family of five. Yeah, it's a lot of money. I mean, it's definitely a lot of money. Um, again, especially if you're coming from the West Coast, it is a big, big trip. This is not just like, oh, let's drive down to Disney for, you know, the day or so. Like, this is a pretty big trip for, for people like us. Now, so I just encourage you, if Disney World is a trip that you want to take for you and your family, and you're a family of five, you're coming from a great distance, just know it is very expensive. It's gonna, um, require a lot of planning and it's going to require a lot of potentially saving too. Um, but for us, we had a great Disney World trip. And so if you're going to Disney anytime soon, whether you're um, a small family, a large family, we really hope you have a great time. Our family had great memories that will last a lifetime. And so for us, it was a lot, but um, it was worth it for us.